What we wanted to do is for you when we record a jam to draw on top of it. Why teal draw? Because it looks so nice. A lot of complexity of this code is around the corner cases that you don't even see for more than a couple hundred of milliseconds. I'm curious, like, what was the driver for making that decision, right? Because this is not like the regular or the most common usage for, of TLDRAW. So today we have a technical deep dive into our use of the TLDRAW library in our most recent video annotations feature. Every week we're sharing behind the scenes of building our startup. And this week we're joined by three engineers on the team. So let's get into it. Yeah, so hello. And today we're gonna go and talk about another feature, which is a sibling of Blur that was a topic of previous podcast, annotations. Basically, what we wanted to do is for you when we record a jam to draw on top of it, just squiggle or highlight something as you go and record a video. And uh, we started with specking it out. We got a huge, beautiful Figma file with <laughs> <laughs> All right, like uh, the new toolbar at the bottom uh, with both annotations and blur feature. We started by thinking about how this would work with one tab with full screen recording, uh, where you switch between different tabs and you would have different squiggles and drawings on them because we cannot actually do something on your desktop. We're doing it inside of your browser tab, right? And um, Aiden, as we were specking this, mm -hmm. uh, here's something that you want to talk, to talk about. Yeah, I mean, like a lot of the two features shared, uh, as you remember, a lot of the the same logic insofar as the demo trials and like how somebody will be entitled to use it, how we're going to like filter and allow the the user to to use the the feature to begin with some of the new updates to the like recording toolbar but by and large the like underlying implementations were very different in blur the easy it was very easy or it is very easy to add a blur filter to elements on the page uh, as much as there are challenges for how to maintain that over time and uh, you know some adversarial stuff that always happens when you're working with uh, elements inside the page, the annotations, there was a lot more questions about like how exactly we're going to, to implement it. And that was, if I recall, like a lot of the research that you put in uh, originally yeah. that played really well to your background in like game design, just because like, you know, pointers and drawing. I remember an early conversation that we had actually about um, the two different layers uh, that you were, you were specking out originally. Oh yeah, I was really excited about it. So I went on to prototype something with like uh, transparent canvas or with vectors. But then I, uh, I think it was in one of the calls and uh, somebody, by this point I already remember who it was, uh, dropped uh, name TLDRAW. And like, I think a day later, I, re I remember myself thinking, well, why the hell are we not using a library for this if there exists a library? So I went on re and researched it. It did a small prototype. And then, of course, I went to their website. And uh, as a good engineer, what do you got to do when you want to use a third party library as you really want to take care and look at what the license is that? And then I look at the, they actually have a commercial right license or they would show their logotype in the corner. Well, we don't want that. So I emailed them right away. And I think about 12 hours later, I got one of the funniest emails that I've ever got where the guy was responding, why are you asking me this? You guys already have our license. Turns out that I completely forgot that TLDRAW was suggested by Hui, and why was it suggested? Because we've already been using it. When we uh, record a screenshot in the draft window, you can draw things on top of the screenshot exactly using the TLDRAW. And Hui have actually been working on this feature, I think it was implemented like a year ago, right? Yeah, I mean, we had a previous implementation, kind of like a bespoke implementation, of annotations that were kind of more like the route that you're going to. Um, you know, like we handled each draw in each vector um, in each shape on our own. So we like, we, we, we were doing everything. Um, and solving this problem is expensive, right? Like we, we can't really afford to invest engineering hours to have a, a top notch 
annotation library because that's not really our what what users go in, you know look for jam like they do want like having a, a top notch annotation feature is something that's of course desirable um, but it, it's kind of like drifting away from our car from Jim's car value so like that's what I think that's what the biggest reason for deciding to shop for a library was because um, it's kind of like tangential to the to the file that we offer users and you know TL draw is I think of the open source open source like you, you still need to pay um, but it is open source um, it's by far I think the, the most extensible one um, in terms of um, allowing you to leverage what they have already built right so like the coolest things about TL draw is like how much effort and care they put in like the little things um, so like they do have pressurized splines right so like when you draw there's like uh, a fade which is pressurized depending on how much you know how long a particular miles event was was being done in a particular time span would it be interesting to show any any of these parts of it i'm wondering if any of them are easy like more easily shown than than to describe or more fun to show than to describe because what you're saying about like i think i understand like sort of this handwriting quality where when you're pressing for longer it's like having it be a thicker line is that right yeah i, I can share so this is the screenshot um and to correct myself it's not a time spin but rather like see if I'm holding it tight here and then as I expand it like it, it's not a, a, a thick line it smooths out the the edges here um, and so like this is one example of the care that they put into the library um, and the good thing is that this is extendable another thing is like this sort of like how they draw like this selectable uh, corners around each shape. Um, and so because of that, adding blur, which is this, like this is a, something that we have added. So adding blur was kind of like somewhat trivial um, because the model that they have um, is straightforward. So like this is a React canvas, um, you know, uh, which is not an HTML canvas, but like it's a, it's a set of React SVG elements, um, and the neat thing is that they have like this dual, uh, so like each uh, component here has like the, the React version, uh, like the React instance, and when you hit create, what this is gonna do, this is gonna, they have like its counterpart of a, an SVG element, um, which is distinct from the SVG that you see on that React canvas. And that is cool is because we can we can use powerful SVG features to render this the way that we want. Um, so like there's a whole world in, within SVG filters. Uh, and I think like having, like this was a great design decision. Yeah, anyway, but you know, I think it's a library where a lot of good design decisions were made and like this manifests and how efficient we are in actually, you know, delivering value to whoever is using Jam, which, you know, I think it's like the core aspect of any uh, third party library. Um, let me also show what exactly are we talking about here, by the way. So by the way, that's Hacker News, that's basically where we usually demo and try features. So now when you record a tab, we have this beautiful new toolbox here and the annotation feature, and uh, you can draw that's uh, pretty much it hello and uh, then you stop and you even have this annotations on video uh, but we i think we covered this a great functionality in the previous podcast mm -hmm. right and that's the point you can highlight whatever you want and at this point it's already just part of the video file it's uh, when you see this so it's a completely different implementation uh, because when you create a screenshot instead that's where you have all this TL draw stuff in this uh, iframe, draft, draft iframe that we display on top. Uh, 
So your point there is it's a completely different implementation because of because of being a video versus it being um, on um, top of, right? No, 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 no. It's just uh, it's a different medium by the point where we get to the draft, but it's a different implementation because here, uh, once again, record tab, you see that we don't have anything. We don't have any tools. We don't have lines. We don't have uh, selecting different shapes. All we want to do, like we, as you see, just disappears slowly when you stop drawing. All we want to do here from the product perspective is give you the ability to draw with your pointer and that's all. We don't want to give you anything else. We want to cut off everything else. And my work with Tail Draw here was not to uh, actually add all these different tools, add controls, but cut off all the ability for you to do anything. For example, for some time it was um, before I figured out how to set up CSS styles to override this correctly, what would happen is you start drawing and then the virtual camera of Teal Draw starts moving around so that the thing that you just drawn is sliding up the screen. Because what Teal Draw was originally, uh, well, uh, created for is like infinite canvas on which you draw, you zoom in, you zoom out, you select things. You, and my work was uh, just forbidding all of that because our goal is much simpler here. I'm curious, like what made you, uh, what was the driver for making that decision, right? Because this is not um, like the regular or the most common usage for, of TL Draw. It looked great, but I'm curious about the, the decision process. I think that could be useful. A decision of why do we need to cut off things or a decision why do we need to use TL Draw? Why TL Draw? Because it looks so nice. Because compared <laughs> to my prototypes, just the lines, you mm -hmm. start drawing and the thing that you were talking about, uh, only when it's video, you usually, I think, um, you move a lot more and it's just the feel for the end user because immediately when you start doing it, I did a prototype with vector lines, but they were angly and it would take me some time to figure out where exactly to like to work with um, splines and everything to remember these equations that I did back when I was doing game development and then they would be buggy and then somebody else of QA would probably discover something that you draw and it looked weird. And here you put in a library and the most important thing, how the lines look, the lines look great. I'm curious. There's one topic we didn't, um, we didn't touch on before, but it came up as like, um, this issue or the, the difficulty with, um, incorrectly extending the library or incorrectly extending tail draw. I don't know if that's what we want to get into is the la as sort of the last one here, or if there's a different one, uh, if we already covered it in some way, I didn't realize, but, uh, but yeah, what do you think? Um, yeah. Because I think they're, as in kind of like every problem solution space, usually there are many ways one can tackle a problem. And, you know, specifically with TL Draw, the same way that they made some really good design decisions, it means that there is a, some set of abstractions in a model one needs to learn of how things work internally, um, that it's not usually obvious at first. So like at first you could just try to hack your way out of getting a feature to work. Um, but overall, I think the, the takeaway is, I think there's some value in really trying to understand whatever it is that you're working against instead of just getting the thing done, right? Because essentially you, you will end up, not necessarily, but you know, that is usually debt that is accumulating in some ways. And I think it's easier to, to do that in TL Draw because, you know, oh, we, we export this React component um, and you can get all the shapes that are present in a canvas using this API call. Um, but it's, you know, it's not obvious like how one would extend, oh, I want this particular, like the, the case for annotations in a video. Like there there is a set of prerequisites that make up the the, the tool, right? You just want to sketch and then you want that to fade after a particular um, timeout. 
So how one goes about doing that, I think um, that's where I think it, it lies some in, interesting um, learnings, right? Because I think that's where um, one can also learn about, for example, how Teal Draw architected all these entities, right? How, how it architects the data model. How, the, how is the data state flow look like, right? Like it, you know, it's kind of like similar to React, which is a, uh, a one-way binding data flow, right? So you, you make, you, you can only make mutations through this very well-defined API, and then you need to listen for events in a different, like an event-based um, API. So like, I think overall, I think the takeaway is it is, I do think even though there might be some like hard requirements with respect to time, certain, all these different sorts of things, I do think it's valuable to take the time to learn how things work. <laughs> it's a long way to say that. <laughs> Thanks for sharing with you guys. All right. All right. See bye you bye.